Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial video about Modular Colonization Systems mod or MKS for short. If you are not familiar with MKS, it introduces a lot of life support and colonization aspects to the game and it's a very good mod overall. MKS also increases the difficulty of the game quite uh, substantially and uh, as you will notice after installing it that your <laughs> Kerbals now have much more requirements and uh, basically they need some uh, extra resources actually to keep them alive and uh, you have three resources that you need to take care of uh, supplies habitation and electricity in this video we will focus on supplies and as you can see uh, our Jebediah and this small capsule here is considerably less happy when he has no supplies and uh, he's stuck in a cramped living space. Obviously we cannot send him on an extended mission in uh, conditions like that, so let's take a look at what parts the mod introduces and how we can fix this problem right now. The life support branch of MKS mods introduces a couple of custom parts as well as changes functionality of other MKS parts and all the parts introduced by this particular branch can be found under its own custom category called life support. And you will find here a lot of different tanks for fertilizer and um, uh, supplies as well as um, a host of different greenhouse parts and recyclers that are used to work with uh, the MKS life support mod or MKS in general. As you can see you will have uh, different types of uh, containers and um, for the testing purposes here we will just grab this smaller uh, life support tank that adds 100 supplies and see what effect it has on our Jebediah. And as you can see he is no longer starving which is a great thing and he can last in this pod for about 9 days which is great. Although this is probably enough to send one Kerbal for a man mission and back but this is certainly not enough to send him somewhere further like Minimus or even Tuna. As you can see uh, electricity wise he is also using some electricity while um, he is in that cabin and with the landing can internal batteries he can stay there only for about 1 hour and 22 minutes which is definitely not enough to send him anywhere even to space probably so we need to fix that. By default one Kerbal will consume 1.8 supplies per hour and you can reduce that amount by using recyclers. MKS life support introduces two types of recyclers, one that will affect one crew member and the other that is more efficient that will affect three crew members. Stock Science Lab also has a built-in life support module that reduces the supplies consumption by half and affects four crew members, which is very useful. Recyclers also require some amount of electricity to operate, so keep that in mind when designing your vessels. And now let's grab one of those smaller recyclers and attach them to our landing can. It reduces the supplies consumption by 60%, therefore uh, it should almost more than double the amount of time that Jebediah can last on those small supply pack. As you can see it affects one crew so this is exactly what we need for our current purposes. Let's also grab one of the bigger batteries to extend the electricity time that he will have. And as you can see effectively this is what happened when we turned the supplies uh, recycler on. Now Jebediah can stay in our landing camp for over 20 days. Electricity wise it has also gotten much better as you can see with the current batteries he can stay in the landing camp for over 2 days. And when the recycler is working Jebediah is consuming only 4.3 supplies per day. When the recycler is off as you can see the amount of supplies consumed increases to over 10 to 10.8 exactly. Um, so you can see there is a quite significant drop and quite significant advantage of using recyclers. Just keep in mind that you need to turn those recyclers on when your vessel is launched and this can be quite problematic especially for larger vessels that have multiple recyclers spread all around the vessel. When your Kerbals will run out of electricity or supplies or a habitation they will turn into tourists and you won't be able to control them so this is actually quite important to keep them happy throughout the entire mission. Another resource to watch out for is obviously the habitation or hub space for your Kerbals and here I wanted to show you how you can easily extend that by just adding more space for your Kerbals to live in and uh, since we have only one pilot Jebediah I'll add one extra landing cam and one command pod just to show you how this extra living space will increase his habitation time. Obviously habitation is probably the most complex resources from MKS life support and MKS in general so that deserves another video but just by adding the extra landing cam and command pod each designed to hold one Kerbal, we extended the hub time and home time for our Jebediah to 22 days. 
So with this kind of vessel, he is actually set to go to the moon and back, probably. So if those were our only options, surviving longer trips might be very difficult. But luckily for us, that's not the case. We can simply grow supplies in space using greenhouses. And MKS Life Support introduces a couple different types of greenhouses. Uh, differing in size and therefore their production throughput. The smallest greenhouse produces enough supplies to sustain one Kerbal if one small recycler is also present. But there are also large variants that can increase your supplies production and if coupled properly with recyclers they can actually extend the time your crew will be supplied with supplies in space for a quite long time. To actually grow supplies in space you need two more things. First is obviously fertilizer. And the second one is mulch, which is uh, produced by Kerwals consuming supplies. One unit of fertilizer will produce 11 units of supplies and consume in that process 10 units of mulch. And one unit of mulch will be produced by one Kerwal consuming one supply. So as you can see, this chain is actually a little bit more efficient and allows you to take just a little bit of fertilizer and a little bit of starter supplies plus some greenhouses and you will be going on for a very long time compared obviously to the case if you took just the supplies with you. So just to show you how efficient this process can be I designed a small test vessel here that will use this small pack of uh, fertilizer attached to our landing can and the small greenhouse that we have installed on top and using that small packet of fertilizer we will fill those two large tanks of uh, supplies that you can see attached on the right side that are currently empty. Obviously we also supply the mulch that you can see on the left side of the vessel. We will also add a couple of those radioisotope thermoelectric generators to supply us with electricity and maintain proper heat level for our greenhouse. So here we are on the launch pad in our unmanned vessel to reduce the Kerbal factor from this test and as you can see after starting our a small greenhouse that we have installed on top and waiting for a quite a long time actually because this greenhouse is not very efficient we were able to fill those two large supply tanks to the brim using only even less than 100 fertilizer that we had brought with us so as you can see this process is actually uh, indeed very efficient you don't obviously need to store all those supplies um, that you can produce with the amount of fertilizer you're bringing with you you only need to store just a little bit of them and um, consume them on a daily basis uh, or have them consumed by your crew on a daily basis throughout the entire duration of your mission and this way you will be set this is obviously a way to grow supplies in space because it requires only fertilizer electricity and mulch so it's a very fast way but but it's not the most efficient one and uh, we will talk about other methods that are more suited for planetary colonization a little bit later in the video. So to sum up the three greenhouse sizes introduced by MKS life support mod and uh, for comparison purposes I also grabbed the Mark II Landercan, the larger variant and uh, all those greenhouse types, greenhouse sizes work on the single mode only and which is agroponics and this mode as mentioned previously requires mulch, fertilizer and electric charge to produce supplies. Uh, the smallest one is obviously the least efficient, the cupola sized one is um, five times more efficient and the inline version is more or less ten times as efficient as the smallest one and uh, produces enough supplies to probably sustain free kerbals without any recyclers. But recyclers are actually a very important thing that you need to take into account and will reduce the mass that you need to carry up into space on longer missions especially quite significantly. Things get a little bit more complicated if you have the core MKS mod installed as well because now you have multiple different options how you can grow your supplies. This is where <laughs> it actually becomes difficult to understand because you not only have the agroponics options available for you but you also have a number of parts that allow you to grow supplies using planetary resources that you can mine that are introduced by the MKS mod. And you can grow supplies more efficiently using less fertilizer using those different types of uh, cultivate modes. There are basically two that allow you to grow supplies more efficiently. One is based on substrate and the other is based on dirt. Those are both mineable resources introduced by the MKS mod and you have two different types of greenhouses that you can use. One is inflatable as you can see on the right side and the core round part is the one designed more for maybe space applications which is from the Tundra line of base parts. 
To grow supplies using this method you also need water and water is another mineable resource from MKS that you can either mine directly or extract from uh, other resources such as hydrates and um, efficiency of those two methods is also different substrate being more efficient than dirt and then obviously the most efficient being the agroponics. You can also produce fertilizer in situ using MKS production chains, but we will talk about production chains introduced by MKS in a different video because this is a really vast topic to cover. What is also important to notice is that some of those parts can be specified as greenhouses, which basically will boost the efficiency of the part that they are attached to. So we could obviously set this inflatable greenhouse or attach multiple uh, inflatable greenhouses to our round tundra part and set them all to operate as greenhouse. So they would not produce uh, supplies uh, themselves, but they will boost the efficiency of that tundra part. And if we put a scientist or a farmer or uh, any other kerbal that has a perk that boosts the efficiency even further, we could have a very efficient supplies production facility. This is something that is actually quite difficult to explain if you would like to put the right numbers to it, because it all depends on where you are, what your colony status are, what is the bonus that you get from biology, what is the experience of the kerbal that is inside. Many different factors contribute to the overall efficiency of your uh, plants. This is true for greenhouses and this is true for everything else that you will use in MKS, but the starter values are obviously given and uh, you can use them to have a rough estimate of um, how efficient your production will be. And uh, an important information to take away from this is that if you want to set a base somewhere on the ground and you don't want your kerbals to starve, it's actually very useful to go for one of the other supplies production method. If you land in a spot where substrate is available, go for the substrate farming. If you land in a spot where there is no substrate and there is just a lot of dirt lying around, which is practically everywhere, you can go for dirt farming and uh, you will be fine. Another very important thing to remember is that all production plants from the base MKS mod, greenhouses included, require one extra resource to operate, which is machinery, which actually renders all greenhouses from base MKS mod operating on agroponics as kind of redundant if you have the MKS life support mod installed because they require machinery and the ones from life support extension do not. So keep that in mind if you are sending a vessel into space that will rely solely on agroponics, you want to use the greenhouses from the life support mod only and not from the base MKS one, because you don't need an extra resource to run them. However, base MKS mod also introduces brand new and more efficient recyclers to your chain and also brand new type of recyclers called purifiers that consume water as well as electricity, but are even more efficient up to 90%. So keep that in mind because they can be ultra efficient as a uh, surface outpost recyclers, especially if you can supply them with all the needed resources in situ. The last thing I wanted to mention in this video that is introduced by the MKS mod is that your Kerbals now have limited time they can spend on EVA and that's only one hour. So don't leave your Kerbals out in the space because they won't like it and they won't thank you for it. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and you found it useful. I would also like to thank Luke, Carl, Roth, Joe Loffen, Shurax and all my patrons on Patreon for supporting me. It really means a lot to me. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.